Hello. In the 1960s, 70s and early 80s, in Sydney there was only one trainer who dominated the ranks, TJ Smith. He trained no less than 33 consecutive premiership wins. And along the way, he used some of the top jockeys for his stable riders. Kevin Langby and Malcolm Johnson were two of them. I caught up with them both last week for a chat about their careers, about their time with TJ, and about some of the wonderful associations they had with some of the great horses from the TJ Smith stable. Guys, the term legend is used far too loosely in society today, but to suit you guys, it's certainly an, an applicable description. Kevin Langby and Malcolm Johnston, thanks for your time this morning. No Thank worries, you. Steve. Thank you, Stephen Hart. And applicable. I didn't think we'd run into words that big. No. Uh, hey. uh, Jeez. See what happens. It's going to be funny. The biggest word I know was wheelbarrow. <laughs> and I, I can't fit it into many sentences. But go on. <laughs> applicable. <laughs> Getting better. Outstanding. Yeah. Both, both in the country and both found yourself in the city at an early age. But Malcolm, it would be fair to say that uh, riding horses wasn't exactly a, uh, an easy task for you? Well, Steve, it wasn't because... As a kid growing up, I, 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 I didn't have anything to do with horses. Mine's one of those real fairy tale stories. Kevin's is a bit different, but uh, I never rode pony club, any of that stuff when I was a kid. I didn't want to have anything to do with horses. Every weekend, I, I went and played footy, um, as kids do. I had no ambition um, to become a jockey, but I was tiny. I was really really small and uh, because of my association, because of my uncle Les Coles and his association with with horses, he won the 1962 Melbourne and Caulfield Cups double on a horse called Even Stevens and because of that association with racing and my stature, I was pushed in that direction and and it's, it's just one of those real fairy tale stories and uh, I come down to Theo Green on a three months trial basis and I got on a horse, eventually got on a horse, couldn't ride much mm. at all. Mm. Uh, I thought I, I didn't like it very much because I was getting up at 3.30 in the morning, mm. picking up shit um, and I thought, that I don't know whether I really want to do this. Yep. But we eventually found out um, that horses could run for me. Yep. Why? I don't know. I, I, I certainly wasn't a good horseman yep. as such, but horses could run for me, and that's the name of the game. Getting horses to run as fast as possibly you can between point A and point B, and horses could run for me, and the rest is virtually history, but I was, I was, I was very lucky. And Kevin, your situation was a bit different because you did ride work at Orange before you came down to the city. It yeah. Was, it, it was your dad who encouraged you to go to the city and have a try? Yes, well, I lived on a bit of a property out at Orange and always had ponies and I don't know how we got to school. We used to ride the ponies and tie them up <laughs> the fence. So, I don't know, I must have had schools at Forbes. I didn't go. Well, that's the reason why. You should have learned to ride horses. We used to go down to the grocery shop and tie the horse up the fence and go and get things and then... I was riding work for Maxie Wardell, which was a leading train up there, then Dick Cornish after that. Yep. And uh, I had the opportunity to go down to Melbourne to ride Courtney. Well, prior to that, I could have got my licence at Orange, and I'm jumping a gun here, and I said, yeah, beautiful. Dad said, no, you can go and try in the big smoke yep. first. If you don't make it, you can come okay. back. Mm. And I wanted to go to Brian Courtney because Jeff Lane, those days, were my idol then I don't know what happened, but Ned Dockley went to Sydney, he was riding, and uh, he got me in with Fred Hood, so I started with Fred Hood, so yeah, I've been associated with the horses for quite a while. So Malcolm, you mentioned Theo Green, how, how did you end up at Theo's? Well, it's a funny scenario. My, my old grandfather, uh, Les Coles' dad, um, he just rang him up out of the blue, and said, my grandson's very tiny, blah, 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 the whole story. And, and, and if there was a position vacant at Theo's at the time, yep. uh, he'd take kids on, but on a trial, yep. on a three months sort of like trial basis. Yep. And when my grandfather uh, rang Theo, 
he was looking for the next kid to come along right. after Johnny Duggan. Yep. Johnny Duggan and Peter Stanley uh, were the apprentices there at that particular time. And he was looking for two other apprentices to follow them guys when yep. they finished their apprenticeship. And it just so happened, luck of the draw, there was a position vacant, um, which I filled and another guy called Gary Morris uh, filled at the same time. So he used to have two apprentices, yep. um, invariably had two apprentices that, uh, that went their apprenticeship uh, with each other. Yep. And, and I was just lucky enough there was a place there when he rang and, and I got the spot. So it was pretty handy. Now, Kevin, you come to Sydney and your first race ride was around about your age 15 and a half. Yes, started very early. You remember that? Yeah, full feel at uh, Rose Hill, horse called Self Support. Actually, my first race fall off in two, <laughs> so I do remember him quite well. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so that was experience when the gates opened. Holy hell, what am I doing here? A bit different than the trials. We only used to ride in three trials. Yeah. Yeah. You got your licence back in them days. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, self-support. Fantastic. Yeah. You mentioned full fields then. What about the fields today <laughs> compared to oh, yeah, our yeah. day? Yeah. Oh, they're like 18 runners. You go around and do it days. If you look around and see where the rest of the field are. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. So Theo was yeah. so great with young apprentice jockeys, yeah. a bit like uh, Ron Quinton is today. What, 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 what made him so good with the kids? It's a good question. And I think... It was all about, uh, he was just a great human being. He was a wonderful bloke and, and he was tough. We were all scared of him for no other reason than we respected him so much. He demanded uh, respect mm. and that was the greatest thing. You, you certainly had to work. Yep. He demanded uh, good worth work ethic and he demanded respect and apart from that whatever come along he was just a great guide he was it was like a father figure to everyone he took on um, but you didn't get many chances if you stuffed up along the way yep. um, he wouldn't sack you well he sort of would sack you he, but he'd place you somewhere else because yeah, yeah, um, yeah. a few were moved on yeah. along the way. Yeah. Um, like the guy I started with, Gary Morris, he's a funny, f funny guy, but he ended up in Canberra right. because he, he, <laughs> he stepped out of line a couple of times yeah. and you always got a couple of chances, yeah. but if you abuse those chances, uh, next minute Gary was going to Canberra. So, um, yeah. And that's what happened. Yeah. But... Why he was so good, he was, he was dead set like a father figure. He knew racing inside out and we just respected him so much. All we wanted to do was make him proud of us. Yep. You know, and I followed a couple of superstars in the game like uh, Gordon Spinks, Ronnie Quentin, Johnny Duggan. Yep. It don't get much better than them. No. No. And then along, I come along after them and I thought, gee where's you know, it just, I, I can't be in the same league as these blokes. And then I stepped up and then after me was Darren Beeman. Yeah. So, you know, the bloke, he, he was just, his contribution to racing Theo mm. Greens mm. has been unbelievable. Yeah. Absolutely unbelievable from the riders he's produced. And he, I tell you now, he was, a, he was a great horse trainer. Yeah. Very, very, very good horse trainer and loyal. Yep. His kids rode everything. Yep. Whoever was the kid at the time, whatever was in the stable, the they rode it. Yeah, 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 they rode it. But during your apprenticeship, you, you ended up with three apprentices' titles, and the one that fascinates me and, and, and it still um, uh, floors me today was 107 and a half wins in one season. You yep. not only won the apprentices' jockeys title, yeah. but you beat the seniors as well. Yeah. From a stable that really didn't have a big string of horses. No, nah, no, they didn't. They didn't. Um, but I was, uh, in those days, Steve, it was, it was uh, as an apprentice, you finished your career at 21 years of age, but it didn't matter how many winners you rode, yep. you had a kilo and a, kilo and a half claim. Yep. Um, and everyone went right through their apprenticeship with a claim. When I won the premiership, 
uh, as an apprentice, they all said, like, the older jockey said, oh, this bloke, you can't, you, we've got to do something. They changed the rules. Uh, they changed the rules, yeah. <laughs> so then you rode 60 winners and you lost your claim. Yeah. But I did have an amazing run that particular year. Everything I got on just won. Mm. And I was riding for Bart and Tommy because you had a claim. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was a big advantage, one and a half. Yep. Um, and I, I did write a lot of winners, and they changed the rules, and um, the rules today still stand. You yep. know, no, no one, will, no kid will do that yep. ever again. No. But the opportunity was there for me to do it, and I just had an amazing year, and, and um, just went from strength to strength. Yep. And uh, you know, it's, it makes you pretty proud when you can sit here and say. They changed the rules because of my exactly. performance <laughs> in those days. So, yeah, it was good. We couldn't get rides. <laughs> <laughs> I'd done my allowance in 15 months. <laughs> you, know? you wonder why you can't get a ride. <laughs> I know, I know. It was, it was just... But, uh, but it, was, it was fair. And, well, I'd love to see a few of these kids today still have the um, uh, luxury yeah. of what we had yeah. with a claim right through the your apprenticeship it was yeah. a pretty pretty big advantage um and it, it really stood out that year and a few of the jocks said oh no this is this is getting beyond the joke <laughs> we got to draw the line some somewhere and the last jockey to do it before i did it when um the jockey's title as an apprentice i think was jack thompson i think he did it in, yeah, in the fifties, yeah. yeah, or yeah. something. So yeah. then I come along in the seventies and did it, and that's when they they stepped on it. But yeah. uh, and I'm in the middle. I'm in the sixties. <laughs> You're in the sixties. That's right. Loser. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, yeah, I, did, I, I didn't get the claim in half. I done six years apprenticeship. Yeah. yeah well, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You end up being number one rider for T.J. Smith, and, and do you remember your first winner for T.J. Smith? Yeah, I think it was a 330 to one shot. It was indeed. Oliver <laughs> Twist. Really? A maiden New Year's gift. Really? Funny, I didn't get a ride for him another four months. I couldn't understand why. What? Jeez. <laughs> yeah. I never won another one race after it. 330 to one? Yeah. Dick owned it. Dick Smith owned it. I did find out later he had something on it too. Did he? Yeah. Dick Smith. Yeah. His colours were orange, orange with green, green seams, seams. and it. a green cap. Yeah. Denise's Joy. Yeah. yeah, those yeah. colours. Four premiership wins between 71 and 74, 150 major wins for you, Kevin, and wow. 39 cup races. But at the time you raced, we didn't have the Group 1 status. Yeah. So yeah. we'd have to go through the record books to find out exactly how many Group 1 wins. I always say, always say round 50. All right. <laughs> yeah, round 50. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who's going to find out? <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Somebody will start digging it. Well, someone will, yeah. it. Someone will. <laughs> But Kevin and Malcolm, you're both synonymous with famous horses with the Australian turfer, Malcolm Kingston Town and, 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 and Kevin Gunsin. But, you know, you guys rode a host of other r real good horses, including, for you, uh, Kevin, maybe Mahal, Ming Dynasty, mm. uh, Great, Great Lover, uh, Hearts Hill, John Zo, all those three slipper winners you had. So we don't, people tend, don't tend to talk about those uh, an awful lot, but they... They may not have had the, had the stature and the following of those gun sins and images. But well, I think the following with gun sins, Steve, was because he was a grey. Yeah. And years mm. ago, not many greys were going around, not like these days. And, they, and racing did a supping, same. Every time then Kingston Town came on, there was a laps in racing and a horse would come and get the crowds back. Yeah. But, you know, I think with gun sins, it was just a grey. But, you know, I rode other good horses. There was a horse called Phantom Dotter. If it's three-year-old, he won sprint races. He's won a welter as a three-year-old. You know, back in those days, you win a welter as a three-year-old, mm. and he never got beat. He broke down. Mm. He could have been anything. Mm. Then you say maybe Mahal. Only had one ride on her, and she won the uh, Doncaster. Yep. You know, so there's been a lot of good horses. You know, that as you say, people don't put together, but. Uh, no, we've been quite fortunate with a lot of them. Well, I mean, you certainly wouldn't mind a stable full of them today, would you? And, oh, and, and with Malcolm, awesome. you won a Caulfield Cup on Mighty Kingdom. He was a great horse, Mighty Kingdom, and a great three-year-old. If Kingston Town hadn't been around the same era, uh, we may have been talking of Mighty Kingdom being the mm. absolute superstar three-year-old. Mm. Uh, he, he was a super horse and, and tough. By Planet Kingdom, he was a really, really nice little horse. I also rode a great... Great horse, I believe, was a great horse, and no one ever talks about him too much. A horse called Ico, 
Gee, he was a good horse. I yeah, won a, I remember him, yeah. I won a Doncaster on him. I won a Newcastle Cup on him. I won two All-Aid all Stakes on him. He, he was, gee, and everyone always asks, what's your second yeah. best horse you ever rode? Yeah. And I always say I go, and they've never heard of him. No. And he agree. was just mm. a, gee, he was a good yeah. horse. He yeah. had a bit of a sway back, yeah. and he, he was just a real good horse. But yeah. people do forget... Um, of the other great horses yeah. you ride, and but like we both rode a couple of champions, but the great horses are not that far behind no. them. Um, I think I'm a lot bit like you. I think that I heard, a, and I'm not being uh, smart when I say this, but I heard a guy on the radio this morning say Happy Clapper was a champion. Uh, I just went, no, 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 you've got to stop doing that. Bit loose, no, no, bit loose with the it's a bit loose word. with the champion yeah. word because well, we don't no. see many of them, no, really. No, no, we don't. No, you know, we don't. No. Uh, but it, uh, it, it's, it's great when they come along. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Malcolm, you're going to be happy with me because I'm not going to talk to you about Kingston Town's Melbourne Cup. Yeah. Because I've, I know you've spoken. Well, that's good. You did. <laughs> you already mentioned it. Well, now I've got the shits now. <laughs> but I just want to talk to you about one Melbourne Cup. Your first Melbourne Cup. 1975. Yep. What a thrill that would have been. Yeah, well, it was 125. 125 to one and you run third. Yeah, run third. And I, I, I'll never forget it because I, uh, the Kiwi bloke who had it, and, and it carried, I think, I think for memory, about 46 kilos mm -hmm. or something like that. And that's the reason I got the ride on it because I, I, I could ride pretty close to the weight and anyway uh, I'll never forget at the furlong he told me to jump out and lead and it was a pretty crappy track and I just went to the front and I knew it was 125 to yeah. 1 and I, I just thought oh, I'll get this round of the corner it'll be good effort you know yeah. and then I, I got down into the straight and flattened out and I'm still thinking gee you know this thing's not going too bad and yeah. I'm letting it run a little bit and it's got no weight in its back Got down to the furlong, and I'm still in front. And I seen these two horses charging at me. Yeah. One was Think Big, and the other was Holiday Wagon. Yeah. And JD was on, Johnny Duggan was on Holiday Wagon. Yep. And I instinctively started to barrack for him. Go on, Johnny, go on, Johnny. And I wasn't worrying about myself, because yep. I thought, I'm just gonna drop off. There'll, yep. there'll be 10 come past yep. me in a minute. And I got from, honestly, from here to the window, from the winning post, and I thought, jeez, I'm still running third yeah. in the Melbourne <laughs> Cup. Yeah. And, and that's when it dawned on me. Yeah. But before that, yeah. all, all I was doing was looking to see if JD was going to, Johnny Duggan was going to win the race. Yeah. And because uh, he was like my hero. Yeah. Um, and, and not worrying about where I was yeah. in the race until probably the last half a dozen strides. Yeah. And I was lucky enough to hang on and run third. And, 125 to one, and uh, he, he was just a stayer, just a real stayer, and w it was a great thrill, but Kevin will tell you, um, whether it be a Melbourne Cup, uh, it's just another horse race mm -hmm. when the barriers go up. It's, it's, although it's a Melbourne Cup, we go out there and you, you just, it's another horse race, yeah, yeah. you know, more, more than anything, and that's, that's how you've got to treat it. And you, you look at the good jockeys, Around, oh, I would have loved to have won a Melbourne Cup. Don't get me wrong, I would have loved to have won one, but it didn't come along. But it's not the end of the world. Yeah, you know, you look back on it and you. There's a heap of jockeys going around, never won one. Yeah, and exactly. they've won a lot of other things. Yeah, exa <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly uh, right. So it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. It's no. not. And and, but if it comes along, it, it'd be great to sit be sitting here where we are now and saying, oh yeah, we won a Melbourne Cup. Yeah. Um, but it didn't happen. Doesn't matter. That's not no, I've got the year all end all. Egg cup. You got egg cup. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember your first ride in the Melbourne Cup, Kip? Yeah, only for you telling me. <laughs> I think it was to Parky. To Parky. Yeah, to Parky. Yeah. 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 Where did you finish, do you remember? Yeah, he ended up being sick. He finished second last, last. Yeah, he, he was in the market a bit too. And uh, I won a couple of lead up races over here on him. And Larry Wiggins from New Zealand had him. And. Uh, we thought he had a bit of a rough hope in it, but yeah, he travelled all right. Then, yeah, I don't think he ever raced after it. Pulled up crook, and that was it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, I didn't have the thrill of thinking of cheering somebody. I see that many backsides. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know, I couldn't see the heads. Yeah. <laughs> well, you unfortunately didn't win Melbourne Cups between the two of you, but no. you both did win Cox Plates, and um, 
There's one Cox Plate I want to talk to you about, Malcolm. When uh, Bill Collins famously said, yeah. Kingston Town can't win, where were you and what did you think? I was, I was in my lounge room at, um, uh, at Coogee at the time. And as soon as he said it, I said to myself, gee, Bill, you might regret saying that, um, instinctively, because that's what champions do. Champions prove you wrong. When, when they're on the deck, and whether they be human or equine, you think they're gone, they'll find something to get off the deck. Yeah. And Bill Collins went to his grave because his nickname, Bill, was the accurate one. Yeah. He never got it wrong. Yeah. He went to his grave re regretting ever saying, and Kingston Town can't win. Mm. Because as um, soon as he seen, he was, he was jammed up between them, and Peter rode him, and he virtually had the stick on him driving him between horses and he was half getting buffeted around. And I knew as soon as he seen a bit of daylight, yep. if he could see daylight, yep. he'd go bang. Yep. And that's exactly what he did. As yep. soon as he found uh, a bit of room yep. and a bit of daylight, he just uh, he just made that statement um, for one of the best cock plates ever, yes. you know. Yes. Uh, because, it, it, and that's what they do, Steve. That's what superstars, Winks have done it. She has done it a few times yeah. in the past. Yeah. We've all sort of held our breath a little bit yeah. and thought, oh, oh. Yeah. But then they find something yeah. else. And that's... But she must yeah. change stride and yeah. balance up and they just get firing. And that's exactly what they do. But Kev, I remember Tegan talking to you recently about uh, your cox plate win in Rising Prince. And you classed him as one of the most improved horses that you'd ever ridden, gone from, say, a midweek uh, oh, winner in, in Sydney. Midweek, Kev, uh, Rose Hill. Graduation stakes, you know, 1,400 metres. Yeah. End up winning group races and Summer Cup, Village Double, McKinnon and the Cox Plate, you know. So every time the bar was lifted, he, yeah, he, he managed just to... put to it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Favourite, yeah. Yeah, Fantastic. one of those fortunate ones, you know. And I think my daughter, Sharon, who trains now, she was working for Vince Steins. She said, Dad, they're going to ring you about this horse. It goes... It goes all right. Yeah. That's all right. I all didn't right. think she expected that either. Yeah. She thought it would a couple in town and that'd yeah. be it. You'd know, take the ride, you yeah. know. Yeah, so I took the ride on it. But you know, said ride it back in the field a bit. Of course, I let on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I was going to say you weren't too far back. No. No. <laughs> no. no. Well, Trainers don't get it right all the time, do they? I know. I know. No. No, they can't no. be accurate all the time. That's like right. That. Exactly. <laughs> What about Tommy used to say to us, just give this a little bit of a chance, field of 18, have it running fifth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello. <laughs> now, speaking of Tommy, he's got a theory that he wants to test with you. I don't know whether it's been spoken about, about how he found out about you taking his job with TJ Smith. Yeah, well, I, I, I was the last to find out. I was absolutely the last he to find out. He claims you sent the papers over to Lord Howe Island. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no way. First time a plot paper ever got there on a Wednesday on a Wednesday. Well see that's what happens with Tommy when you go away. But he you lose your too. job. <laughs> yeah. I think I went away and I lost my job too. <laughs> he came back, I got back, I said, what's this I hear is going on? He said, you don't believe everything in the paper, do you? I said, not generally, but I was at Lord Howe Island. A plane was there with a paper. <laughs> <laughs> Give this to Kevin on. Langby. <laughs> yeah. We're straight to the Blue Lagoon where I was staying. You know. <laughs> Well, that's, oh. see, that's the same what happened to me. I went away and lost my job to Mick Dippman. So, see, that's... Yeah, only thing I was disappointed about where I was staying, we had a solicitor there, but I couldn't find one of those guys who goes around with the... With the print, see if your print was going to paper. <laughs> the dusting yeah, thing. The dusting thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> what happened with Tommy? When he was... He was, he, he was the toughest boss ever. I would... Uh, I was probably too young to take the job on anyway. Um, no, I went I don't to, know why I got this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, went to th I went to the boss and said, boss, I've been offered the job at TJ's. And he said, son, I think you're too young to handle it. Um, why don't you wait a bit? But he said, but I'm not influencing you in any way. Mm. 
because it's the biggest job, one of the biggest jobs in the world, yeah. um, and it's definitely the biggest job in Australia. He said, you make up your own mind. And I sort of went, sat down and I thought, how are you going to knock this back? How are you going to sit on your haunches for... You can't say no. And Anyway, I got the job. Um, but I, I was lucky I did because Kingston Town come along the next yeah. year. Yeah. So if I hadn't have it jumped at it, 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 yeah, it yeah. sort of fitted into place. But when I got the bullet... Rods just stopped coming your way, mm -hmm. um, and that's that's how he was. He 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 was not a bloke to pull you in and sit you down and say, "Now look, we're having a few dramas here." You just stopped getting rides, yeah. and then after a little time, you think, "What's going on?" Yeah, yeah. And then Mick moves to Sydney. <laughs> well, that's what happened. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. that, unfortunately, but that's that was how he worked, and that was his business. Uh, but a great racehorse trainer, as tough as. I've ever seen. Uh, I've, I've never seen a tougher one. Um, but he had numbers in those days. Like, I'd ride out on something and it was lame. Yeah. Well, he'd send it out and bring one back straight away and put it in its box. You know, he had 100 horses all the time. Well, that was hmm. unheard of in yeah, those days. Yeah. He was the only bloke to be able to do it. Well, Kevin used to t is, has said to me previously that he, he'd ride at Wednesday cantering meeting seven races, seven favourites. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You well, I never get a phone call from anybody else because nah. they presume you're riding one of TJ's. Well, that's right. And, 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 uh, and you lose a lot of contacts that yeah. way too, you know. I never rode for anybody else mm -hmm. during my time with TJ, virtually, except for TJ. Mm -hmm. And he'd ring up on the... Uh, we'd ring Mrs Boucher on the, on the Monday. Yeah. And if there was eight races, you'd always have six rides yep. of his. Yep. So there might be two races... With a slot, but no one ever rang you yeah. because you were tied up with TJ Smith. They just take for granted. Yeah, all the time. Because he had runners yeah. in every race. He could have two or three, yep. and Void would be on one, and Ronnie would be on another one, you know, especially yeah. with my time. Yeah. And, you know, you give them a winning chance or things like that, yeah. but, you know, you always got a full book. But, yeah. you know. and, and, and talking about that, it's so different to today. Mm. Like these jocks, they, they all freelance. Mm. Like no one's actually Chris Waller's rider. That's right. There's no absolute... Although Chris Chris has got all the jocks tied up of because he, he just says, no, no, I don't know what you're on yet, yeah. but I want you in yeah. this race and I want... Mm, yeah. Because he has five runners, yes. you know, and yeah. uh, he's just he dominates even more so yep. than TJ okay. in his day. Yep. Yeah, I've, yep. I've never seen anything like um, like what Chris has done. Ever and you can't compare him to TJ because he's it's a totally different, totally well, different. Well, in our time there, you'd be riding work six days a week, wouldn't matter. Oh. Fast work, you'd be riding 21, 22 horses. Yep. Slow work's a bit, yep. you know, you'd be riding 10 at least. Yep. 10, yep. the fast work, you'd be on, off, on, off, yep. and that was it. You and know? that's what you did. And you didn't turn up, there's a phone call why you didn't front, I tell you. Oh, exactly. Oh, well, yeah, you want, have a good, you want to have a good excuse. We used to we used to love going away riding in Brisbane, so you could have a couple of days off. Oh. Just go, whoa, go and ride right. two workers. That's right. was lovely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, he used to, he was so demanding, TJ. But he he expected excellence yeah. all the time, yeah. all the time. And yeah. like I, I, I'm I'm sure that's one of the reasons why I got suspended so much yeah. is because I was so scared. Yeah. You know, I was if. If he said to have it run third or fourth, I had to have it run third or fourth. Oh, no, well, you did. <laughs> I did, yeah, I did. No problem about that. I did, but that... that, that I know, that, you, I know, know you've been a victim of circumstances 52 times, but yeah. I'll tell you something, you yeah. followed his... I got him a fair bit. I got him a bit, but that's my excuse. I was scared. <laughs> I was scared. <laughs> ah, a bit late now. Should have told Ray yeah. Bowie that the other day. <laughs> I want to talk about your passion away from racing, Mel. Oh. The Manly Sea Eagles. Well, yeah, mine's rugby league. They're not going too good. No. He's, uh, he's smiling George. there because... Uh, well, got, you know, you're the lucky dragons. I go wear a red and white jersey the day I thought it was jersey day, but <laughs> I got up in the car and I was, damn, I forgot it. <laughs> well, I, as bad as what we're going, I still would have worn my Manly jumper. <laughs> um, I, I just absolutely love them. And i got to tell you a funny story... As when I was a, when I was a kid.
kid growing up, the only reason, I grew up in a place called Forbes, yep. and uh, the only reason I started following Manly, I had no idea where Manly was. I, I, I No idea. But I used to play footy with a kid, and I went through school with him by the name of David Newell. And he was a Manly supporter, and he was my best mate. Yep. And I thought, if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. Yeah. So I started supporting them, yeah. and to this day, I just absolutely love them. And I went out with my, my son a couple of nights ago, and we were having dinner. And he's a really ambitious kid, Blake, and, and he he's, loves Manly. And when he was a kid, about six years of age, I said to him, and this is true, I said, Blake, what footy team are you going to support? You know, like... And he was only a kid. Yeah. And he knew I was a mad Manly supporter. Yeah. And he said, Dad, I think I'm going to support the Dragons. <laughs> I said, what? He said, yeah. Good judge, that mate. Said, I always used to like I would like it. I love their emblem, the Dragons. I love the Dragons. And I'm sitting there going, oh, this ain't going to be good. <laughs> I've got to go through. Look. So the whole day went past, and I didn't know what to say to him. Like, I couldn't think of anything worse than having a son that didn't follow Manly, you know, I thought, how am I going to change it? So that night, I was with him and I said, do you know what you said this morning, Blake, about being a dragon supporter? Yeah, dragons, he said, yeah, dragons. I said, I just want you to go to bed tonight and think about one thing. He said, what's that, Dad? I said, if you become a dragon supporter, just remember you won't get to see many games. <laughs> He went to bed that night and he woke up the next morning and said, Dad, I've decided I'm going to be a manly supporter. <laughs> I said, yeah, beauty. Yeah, beauty. So I got him. I had to trick a six-year-old. Uh, not bad blackmail a six-year-old, is it? And you know what he did at dinner the other night? He said, I, I, we were talking about something come up about ambitions. And I said, all right, what's, what's yours? He said, Dad, to one day own Manly Warringah oh, wow. football side. Yeah. I said, that's pretty out there. Yeah, I've never sure. heard that no. before. No. But he said, that is one of my absolute ambitions yeah. in life or fairy tales or whatever yeah. is to own Manly Warringah yeah. Sea Eagles. And I said, oh, I probably won't even get a pass by then. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kevin, have you, have you ever sat next to him in a game? Have you watched the game No, together? but when uh, St George's have played Manly Doll Jubilee Oval... Oh. I was just sort of stand there at the main entrance there and there's the best stand there and I was just sit the same seats every year along there and you see them all walking in and when <laughs> Saints in front you can see them walking out too with the thing over their head and <laughs> everybody would sing out, didn't we? Hey yeah. Mark, where are you going? <laughs> the whole stand. It's wonder the stand didn't clap, <laughs> you know. Yes, uh, they get a bit quicker than like, Group going out the side gate. Oh, it was fun. Yay! Well, he was as mad as what I was. Yeah. As, as, as a Manly supporter. Uh, he was. He used to have the beanie, the scarf, the know, jumper, uh, everything. All oh, the shoes. St George. The yeah, the whole package. Yeah. And the only time we used to meet at footy games was when... And we used to go every Sunday. Yeah. Every Sunday. Like, uh, he'd come to Pro Brookie uh, to watch, and I'd see him and... We'd beat them most of the time. And then, <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> and then you used to go to that mad old Jubilee Oval. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you used to have all them lunatics on the hill. <laughs> oh, oh, skull. Oh, skull. <laughs> I remember Skull. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, but, but no, footy... It's, it's been fun. Footy get away from it. is... Great thing, I mean. Amazing. Mm. And you've got to have... You've got to have... Uh, you've got to have something away from racing. Yep. Um, I still play a bit of sport. I mad golfer yep. and it takes me away uh, a few times a year which you've got to have a break yep. um, and I go to China every year playing golf uh, which I thoroughly enjoy yep. and and the two my two passions are rugby league and 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 golf yep. away from racing mm. so so growing up as a as a young manly supporter who were your idol players Bobby Fulton yeah. uh, I was I was in that era the Bobby Fulton era, and then along come uh, Terry Randall, yeah. and he, he's just an absolute yeah. doyen in the game, defensive-wise. I used to love Eagle, and then the more modern day, uh, 
One of my absolute heroes is Beaver Menzies. Yeah. I absolutely love Beaver, and I I loved what he stood for. Like he was one club player. You don't see that anymore. No. He was he was loyal. He had the worst, shittiest headgear you've ever seen. <laughs> but he was just <laughs> one of the best running second rowers. I just loved him. Yeah. Absolutely loved B. What about you, Kev? Who were your idol players? Uh, I'll probably rape her early in the piece. But then you got the oh. Craig Young and Graham Albert and, and Winnie. Yeah, Slippy Morris, you know. Yeah. He was half back there and oh I can't think Great of the other little half little half back used to be there before him, but yeah, we just and I used to live close to the club, you know, I used to go training with them on a Thursday mm. night, you know. I know one time they threw a medicine ball at me, I didn't realise how heavy the medicine ball was. I went down 50 metres down the back of the hill behind me, hanging on to the wall. It was like a tumbleweed. Yeah, I'm surprised you caught it. Yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't have even me. attempted it. Oh, yeah. But when it hit me right in the stomach, I was like a cat. The claws yeah. came out, I was wrapped to it. You know, I just went over the hill with it. But, uh, yeah, it used to be, you know, you've got to have something to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, well, when, when, I, when I was a kid growing up, obviously it was the same era and we didn't have selfies, so we didn't have mobile phones, so yep. I collected autographs and look whose autograph I managed to collect when I was a kid. All the best, Steve. M. Johnson, jeez. I didn't even... I, yeah, I was a good rider. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very nice rider. Good, right? I yeah, that big dude. Yeah, there's, the, yeah, there's like always that. a bit of yeah, 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 a bit of flair there. A bit of flair. Yeah, that's, bit of, that's the word I was looking I, for. Yeah, yeah. You didn't see actually, it. Actually, it looked like a scarf. <laughs> it looked like a scarf. <laughs> wow, that's that's so long ago. Well, I, well, I reckon I probably would have been about seventeen. Yeah, well, I well, I, I think he looks about seven. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I look about yeah. seven. Yeah. yeah, that's that's amazing. That's gee whiz. That's. And, that's you know, to make, 40 to year old. Even, there's Kevin's as well. Wow. Yeah, there's Kev's as well. Uh, Gee, it was pretty sideburns at all. Yeah. Uh. What about you when you had the mullet? Oh, how good was that your was, mullet? I was a bit like uh, that Dundee. Was, no, <laughs> no, talk about that knife. No, this is a knife. This is, yeah, Mine that was a mullet. mullet. That that's mullet. right. <laughs> I always thought I had a good mullet, but your mullets were better. <laughs> you had the best. <laughs> Well, boys, it's been an absolute pleasure to catch up with you. Um, I'd be wanting to, to have this chat, and informal chat, and talk about yeah. football and the other good horses that you rode, and it's been a pleasure. Thanks for spending Thanks, some Steve. Time no with problem. Us. Thank you, Steve. No worries. Absolute pleasure. Thanks, Thanks yeah. Thank you. Well, good. Thanks, KL. No worries, mate. Yeah. Well done. Thank <laughs> you.